Formula One hasn't raced twice in America within the same season since 1982. And yet here we find ourselves on the inaugural Miami Grand Prix weekend with Austin later on in the year as well and Las Vegas added to the mix in 2023. So why on earth has Formula One suddenly gone so USA crazy? Well, the USA has always been a little bit of a black spot on Formula One's radar. You know, Formula One is a massive global sport. It's touched pretty much every single country that you can think of and has spread itself definitely across every single continent. But it's never quite been able to break into America. And America's always had IndyCar and NASCAR as their main two motorsports, alongside obviously NFL, NBA, MLB, that are sort of filling the quotas of American sports watchers. And therefore, Formula One has kind of sat by the wayside and has never been been able to step up to the game of some of those other American sports and Formula One haven't done too much about it. We've had races in Austin since 2012 and a few light-hearted sort of empty threats to build a brand in America but it's never quite come to fruition in the same way that it has over the last couple of years. That is until Liberty Media stepped in in 2017 and purchased Formula One and in my opinion revitalized how Formula One is seen. Domenicali even said himself our strategy in the future will be to be more present in the US and Formula One has completely changed the landscape of fan interactivity and the knowledge of the sport that is available to just the average person that is watching for the first time. You only have to look at YouTube highlights being added, YouTube interviews being available to everybody online, larger diverse platforms use like Twitter being used more often, Instagram being used more often, even the likes of TikTok being added to that over the last few years. And of course, Netflix Drive to Survive series, which is talked about as sometimes a negative, sometimes a positive for Formula One, but it's definitely done its job in getting more eyes on the sport. And so you've caught people's attention with all of these things, all the diverse ranges of grabbing people's attention online. And now you have to deliver Formula One to their doorstep. For me, accessibility in Formula One has always been a little bit of a blessing and a curse. Like, let's take football, for example. You're probably born in a city, you're raised with that team, and you support that team, and you probably see them what, once every two weeks. You see them live. You can build an affiliation to that team really, really quickly just through the surroundings and the fact that everyone around you is probably also affiliated with that team in some way. Whereas Formula One's slightly different. It has 10 teams. They're spread across the globe. They might only visit your country once a year, and that's only if you have a Grand Prix in that country. You might wait years and years and never be able to see a Formula One team actually come anywhere near you and never actually see a race live at all. So the difficulty for Formula One is feeling attached to a team in the same way that you can another sports team or another sports franchise because they're moving around so often. So Liberty Media have tried to bridge that gap a little bit. They've tried to diversify and digitally bring the content to you so you feel a little bit closer to those drivers and teams that you're building a relationship with and that's what we see in formula one generally it's the driver somebody builds an affiliation with as opposed to the teams themselves you see sebastian vettel fans obviously follow him from red bull through ferrari through aston martin and keep with him along the way i think that's also another problem that america has is there's no american driver on the grid there's not been an american driver since 2015 alexander rossi the latest american to take part in a grand prix took part in five grand prix for manor racing and it wasn't vintage, let's be honest. He didn't have a great time at Manor Racing. I mean, nobody had a great time at Manor Racing, but it didn't fill the American audience with a lot of hope for the future when their only American driver on the grid that there had been for a very, very long time wasn't too great. And with a country the size of America, 330 million people, having one race a year just isn't quite enough. You know, that's nearly half the population of Europe. Europe has 750 million people, and yet Europe has 11 races on the 2022 calendar. And yes, I know that we're adding a couple of races in America next year with Miami and Las Vegas, but still three races for 330 million people, you could argue is still not quite enough. Because if there's one thing that Formula One does does have is the fact that because there are no home stadiums, because there are no cities built around Formula One, it can go anywhere and everywhere in the entire globe. As long as there is a racetrack or even just a road, Formula One can go there and can deliver entertainment for those people. Yes, there are iconic tracks over the course of the calendar. I think if you got rid of Monaco, people would raise an eyebrow. If you got rid of Silverstone, people would be a little bit concerned, but they can get away with it. They can go anywhere across the globe. They can do whatever 
wherever they want, they can build tracks wherever they want, and they can deliver the product to as many people as they possibly can. If people are going to pay for it, then Formula One will go there, and it has the ability to go anywhere it wants to go giving fans what feels like a once in a lifetime opportunity to see that driver that you've been following on social media for years. You've watched every single interview that you possibly can from them. You've watched all their behind the scenes stuff that you possibly can too. And you've watched every single episode of them on Drive to Survive and suddenly they're right in front of you. Suddenly you've got that Formula One car, the buzz of a Formula One race. I remember my first time at Silverstone. It was elation just to see the Formula One cars in front of my eyes, what felt like a dream at the time. And I think Liberty Media and Formula One will want to deliver that to more American fans as the sport continually grows in America. And of course, on the back of that, we've got Haas in Formula One. They look like they're set for the future. They look like they're going to survive as the American team. We could have Andretti come in. Andretti could bring her to with them, bring in an American driver maybe into the Formula One grid and see how he does for the first time in Formula One. I genuinely think we could see four or five races in America in a few seasons time. And I think that's kind of the way that Formula One is going. I think some of those tracks that don't deliver in the races or don't deliver the packed out crowds that we're used to now in Formula One are going to dip away off the calendar and we're moving towards a more Western looking calendar for Formula One. But that's just my thoughts on everything that I sort of see for the American Formula One fans. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're American, would you like to see more races in America? If you're not American, which races do you not want to see go off the calendar and replaced by somewhere in America? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. While there subscribe to the channel of course leave a like and i will see you next time